What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Barbarisi from the Bronx. And Tito Love from the South South Bronx. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> we the B. Yeah, we the Ah, we're passing Hunts Point today, guys. We were going to go there today, but uh, it's a little cold, and I don't want the baby out in that kind of weather, you know? We got to get a new vehicle, because this vehicle, I mean, it's okay, but the heat doesn't work that well. It gives off a funny smell. But um, I just want to thank everybody, yeah. my cousin Shelly, my cousin Chrissy. Thank you guys for leaving beautiful comments. Thank you for all your support. I appreciate it with all my heart. And I want to tell you guys, yes, I am currently in a methadone program. So sometimes if you see me a little bit tired, that's why I don't use any drugs anymore. I am on a program. I'm trying to taper off. It's not easy. So I'm just being very brutally honest with you guys. Um, remember, I had a three plus bundle a day habit at one time, and uh, when I first got on the program, I had to go up very high because it wasn't holding me. And the thing with that is, is to taper off, I did taper off 30 mil 40. I had to go back up 10 because uh, it was I was doing it way too fast, and I started to get sick. As a matter of fact, I still get sick sometimes, which doesn't make any sense. I know you guys are probably like, how is that? I drink a massive amount of water. Um, I'm always sweating and I guess I sweat out the methadone some days I wake up like if when I get my take-homes because I only go four days a week I get take-homes Tuesday for Wednesday and then Friday for Saturday and Sunday the thing is is that uh, when I get my take-homes I don't drink it all in one shot I'll take a sip in the morning and then the sip at night or I'll wait all the way to the end and then drink it either way but I don't, uh, I never drink the whole thing in the morning, never. Especially you're not supposed to drink that on an empty stomach because then it really hits you a little too hard. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, and fortunately at the same time, this had saved my life, but it also is liquid handcuffs and I have to go to the program every, you know, not every day, but four days a week. And it is a bit of a nuisance. But I've been taking advantage of the time, you know, I've been going to the program and then making my videos afterwards. That's what I just did. I just came from in there. And, uh, you know, I mean, it is a support system in a way. Especially the other one I used to go to. They used to be very helpful in there. Right, Weedy B? They used to give my baby things. Look at that bribery, everybody. He's a beauty. Isn't that a beauty? Look at that voice. Ew, I just want to squeeze. He has the most beautiful, beautiful eyes, my son. He has better eyes than me, I think so. His eyes are just so amazing. When you look into his eyes, he has like a, a combination of me and Tino's eyes. His eyes are like, they're brown, but in the light, they're like this amazing, like light, honey color. Like like what you were talking about, uh, Shelly, the last time, about how your husband's eyes in the light look like pools of honey. That's exactly what his look like, pools of honey. I think... To me, that's my favorite. I've never been attracted to anybody with eyes like me. Never. I've never been attracted to a man with blue eyes ever in my or green, really. I'm not saying it's not attractive. It is on certain people. Certain people look good with brown eyes. Like Tito looks good with his his black eye. He has black eyes. A baby has brown eyes. And my eyes, like right now, they're two different colors. It's weird. Like one one will be blue, the other one will be gray. Um. It's just strange, you know, that uh, my mother was the only child that came out of all the kids with platinum blonde hair and blue eyes. My father was the only kid that came out with red hair and dark olive green eyes. They, they were a match made in heaven. And unfortunately, my father um, got tired of my mother because my mother... You know, she was a good woman in a lot of ways, being she didn't use drugs, she didn't smoke cigarettes, she didn't drink, but my mother was very argumentative and my father didn't like that. He wanted a, a woman that was going to be his friend. And that's the most important thing, you know. Men want a woman that's not only going to cook and clean for them, but be their friend. And, and be on their side, you know, everyone argues, I'm not saying no, but you got to be encouraging to your partner, you got to tell them, you know, they're doing good, I'm proud of you, I always do that for Tito, 
you know, sometimes I bust his chops a little bit because, you know, every couple gets on each other's nerves sometimes about things that you might not agree with, you know, your own personal preference for certain things. But uh, for the most part, we get along really good. Um, like I said, I'm very proud of Tito. He's a very hard-working man. Um, his job is seasonal, but when he works, his work... Um, it's equivalent to someone working a nine, a regular nine to five. You know what I'm saying? Because he'll work what, like, how many hours in a day, Tito? Like sometimes 16, 20, sometimes 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Excuse me, guys. Right now we're going to Western Beef. My son loves pizza. We bought uh, some dough the other day, some homemade pizza. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out the way I thought it was going to. <laughs> it was expanding so big and we hadn't, because we can't use the oven in the shelter. We can't use the oven, it doesn't work. When you turn it on, the friggin' alarm goes off. You know? Ah, forget about it, Paulie. You know what I'm saying? Forget about it. I wonder, you know, I was just talking to my nephew today and I, there's so many things I have to talk about. I was talking to my Nini today, my brother Anthony's kid, Nicholas. And uh, we were joking around and then he, he wound up telling me that my other nephew, my brother Anthony's son, little Anthony, God bless you all the days of your life, has a YouTube channel called Mr. Humanity. And he has up to 2,000 subscribers and I'm so proud of him. And I hope he helps me with my channel because I could use a little help, you know? And he does challenges. I think what it is is, is that my, my videos are sporadic. I don't stick to a topic. And the algorithm goes by topics. Like if you stick to a certain genre, then the algorithm will stick with you and display your videos to people who want to watch those certain types of videos. So being my videos are sporadic, I'm not getting the proper algorithm. So it's by chance someone will run into my videos. But for the amount of subscribers I have, I get a lot of views, guys. In ratio-wise, so let's say someone has, like uh, Jeffree Star has 16 million subscribers. My ratio is equivalent to his in the fact of probability like so I have 17 subscribers and my views will surpass how many subscribers I have Gabish opposed to being less than you know I mean yeah you can't compare the numbers 16 million compared to 17 that ain't nothing but I'm saying the amount of people I have compared to the amount of views I get is surpassing which I'm very grateful for I'm grateful for just 17 people the only reason why I wanted to grow is so I can monetize off the ads. And so I can tell my story. You know what I'm saying? I got an interesting story. So um, basically, uh, so what do we do? Hold on, guys. So we're going in, uh, in Western Beef right now? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to continue this then. All right, guys. So it's going to be part two. I got to use the bathroom anyway. But um, uh, today, there'll definitely be a part two. Not just blowing you, you know, smoke up the uh, old wazoo. I'll make a part two. All right? Ciao.